a way to use generating functions that we haven't seen yet is to use them to count. And we'll call this convolution counting. And let's, before we get general, let's just look at it uh, as an example that we'll solve using generating functions. So I'm interested in the following question. I've got a bunch of fruits, three different kinds it will turn out, and I'd like to get a collection of n of them, and I want to know how many ways are there to select a basket of n fruits, a, a, a basket of size n of these three different fruits. This is like the donut selection problem, where we, which we knew how to count, but now we're going to have some weird constraints on how I'm allowed to select the individual fruits in the bag. So first of all, I'm only going to let you take two bananas at most. You can take zero, one, or two, uh, sorry, zero, one, or two oranges. And you are allowed to have any number of apples in your selection. And you can have any number of bananas, but they come in bunches of three. So however many bananas you have, it has to be a multiple of three. All right, so this is a weird kind of counting problem. Uh, you could try solving it in various ad hoc ways. It's not that hard, but there's a lovely uniform way to solve it using generating functions. And the place to begin will be to find the generating functions for these individual fruits. But before we do that, let's just be sure we understand the constraints and do an and look at an example. How many ways are there to choose four fruits subject to these constraints? Well, uh, let's count by classifying how many ways there are to do it based on how many oranges we choose. Okay, if I choose zero oranges, then um, I have an option of choosing one apple, in which case I can choose three bananas, uh, or I can choose four apples and no bananas. What I'm really doing here is saying, given that there's zero oranges, then the only choices for the number of bananas is zero or three, and I fill the rest in with apples. Okay, if I choose one orange, by the same reasoning, I can choose zero or three bananas, and I fill in the rest with apples. And finally, if I choose two oranges, if I'm only going to choose four fruits, I can't choose any bananas, so I fill the rest in with apples. And we discover that there are five ways here to select a, a basket of, a bag of four of these three kinds of fruit, subject to the weird constraints on oranges, apples, and bananas. Okay, that's the problem. Now, the first step is going to be to find the generating function for the number of ways to pick oranges all by itself. And that seems almost silly, but let's work it out. So I want O of x to be the generating function for the number of ways to pick oranges. That is, the coefficient of x to the k in the generating function O of x is going to be the number of ways to pick k oranges. Well, um, how many ways are there to pick no oranges? Only one way. How many ways to pick one orange? Only one way. Two oranges? Only one way. But how many ways are there to pick more than two oranges subject to the constraints? The answer is zero. So this uh, generating function has th begins with three coefficients of one, and the rest of its coefficients are zero. In other words, it's simply the polynomial one plus x plus x squared. So much for oranges. And it's looking ahead, by the way, it's worth noting for the purposes of cancellation that 1 plus x plus x squared is also equal to 1 minus x cubed over 1 minus x. Okay, apples are easy because how many ways are there to pick k apples? Well, there's only one way to pick k apples, and that means that the generating function for apples has all its coefficients 1. In other words, it's the geometric series 1 plus x plus x squared, and we already know that that is uh, can be expressed as a simple algebraic expression 1 over 1 minus x. So that's the generating function for apples. Now, if you think a little bit about what, the, what, is, a, what is substituting x to the k for x in the geometric series accomplished? Suppose that I have uh, 1 over 1 minus x and I replace the x by x to the k. Then what I'm doing is I wind up with 1 and the first x becomes an x to the k. The second x squared becomes an x to the k squared. The, the x cubed becomes an x to the k cubed. And I wind up, of course, with that 1 over 1 minus x to the k is 1 plus x to the k plus x to the 2k plus x to the 3k and so on. Um, now, if I think about this as the sequence of coefficients, it means that there are zero coefficients between uh, before the kth coefficient, and then k minus 1 coefficients between successive ones. So I really have this 
uh, sequence where uh, I was replacing x by x to the k winds up inserting k minus 1 zeros between all of the elements in the sequence. So since I want bananas in bunches of three, the sequence of numbers that correspond to how many ways there are to select bananas is one way to pick no bananas, zero ways to pick one banana, zero ways to pick two bananas, one way to pick three bananas, and so on. It's going to be, by this reasoning, uh, the uh, generating function 1 over 1 minus x cubed. And now we've figured out the last of those generating functions. I now have the generating functions in isolation for oranges alone, apples alone, and bananas alone. And now we can pull out of a hat the uh, way in which you solve the composite problem of selecting n fruits subject to these three constraints by solving the number of ways to uh, select just one kind of fruit subject to the constraint. Uh, and the method, and, the, uh, and we have the so-called convolution rule, which says that the generating function for choosing for uh, this mix of apples, oranges, and bananas subject to their constraints is the product of the generating functions of each of the sets separately. So the general principle is that if I have a union of disjoint sets um, and uh, and I want to know how many ways are there to select uh, n of these uh, disjoint sets, uh, n elements from these disjoint sets subject to the constraints that each set has. What I can do is just multiply together the individual generating functions for how many ways there are to select a given number of just the one kind of item. Multiply them together and I get a composite generating function. Um, so in particular here, uh, if I let f of x be the product of the orange of x, the apple of x, and the banana of x, then the claim is that this f of x is the generating functions for the number of ways to select uh, a mix of n oranges, apples, and bananas subject to the individual constraints. In other words, it's the orange generating function 1 minus x cubed over 1 minus x times the apples, which is 1 over 1 minus x times the bananas, which is 1 over 1 minus x cubed. And of course, this example was exactly chosen, so there'd be a nice cancellation here. And what I get is that the generating function for the number of ways to select, select n fruits of apples, oranges, and bananas subject to the constraints is 1 over 1 minus x squared. OK, how does this win? Well, it means then that the coefficient fn of this generating function is the answer I'm looking for. The coefficient of x to the n in f, the, which we're calling f sub n, is the number of ways to select n fruits of the three kinds mixed together. Uh, in other words, it's this, using our coefficient notation, it's the coefficient of x to the n in f of x, where f of x is 1 over 1 minus x squared. But we worked this out in the last talk. We already know what this coefficient is. It's n plus 1. Um, and so we conclude then that the number of ways to select n fruits, uh, apples, bananas, and oranges together subject to the individual constraints that they each satisfy is n plus 1 ways, which is what we saw in the original example where when we were selecting a bag of four fruits, we could do it in five different ways. Now let's try to understand where this rule comes from. I'm not going to prove it rigorously, but I'll sort of uh, explain it by example that I think is persuasive. Suppose that we just look at apples and bananas, and, I was try and I'm trying to pick a dozen apples and bananas, and I want to kind of have a methodical way to count how many ways are there to pick a dozen uh, fruits that are apples and bananas subject to apple constraints and banana constraints. Of course, there are no apple constraints because you can pick any number, but bananas have to be a multiple of three. Well, the way that I can think about doing it is I can classify the number of ways to pick uh, a dozen apples and bananas by saying, well, how many apples shall I pick? And then, of course, the rest will have to be bananas. So if I decide to pick j apples, then aj is the number of ways to pick j apples. It'll always be one, but we're trying to do some general reasoning here. So aj is the number of ways to pick j apples. bk is the number of ways to pick k bananas. So if I'm trying to pick a dozen apples and bananas, if I pick j apples, then I have to pick 
12 minus j bananas. And the number of ways to do that is simply the number of ways to pick the j apples times the number of ways to pick 12 minus j bananas by the product rule. So this then is uh, uh, aj uh, times b, 12 minus j, is the number of ways to pick this mixture of apples and bananas with exactly j apples. All right. So summarizing, that means that the total number of ways to pick apples and bananas subject to the constraints is just by cases, it's the number when you pick zero apples, the number when you pick one apple down through the number when you pick 12 apples, which we've just figured out is A0 times B12 is the number of ways to pick no apples. A1 times B11 is the number of ways to pick one apple and the rest bananas and so on. A12 is the way to pick a dozen apples and no bananas. Um, and if we work this out, uh, let's say that I pick zero apples and 12 bananas. So that means that uh, there's one way to pick the zero apples and one way to pick the zero bananas. So there's one way to pick zero apples and zero bananas. Um, there's one way to pick one apple, but there's no ways to pick 11 apples. So one times zero is zero. And continuing, there's one way to pick 12 apples and one way to pick zero bananas. And I get one way then of picking all, all apples, and the total will turn out to be five in this case. Uh, there are five ways to pick a, a mix of, of a dozen apples and bananas subject to their separate constraints. Okay, so the point is that this expression that I got, got for the number of ways to pick a dozen apples and bananas um, is A0 times B12, A1 times B11 up through uh, A12 times B0. It's the product of the ABs where the subscript sum to 12. And that, in fact, is a familiar expression because it's the coefficient of x to the 12th when you multiply the generating functions. Let's look at that more fully. So suppose that I'm thinking, actually, it doesn't, uh, I mean, we're thinking of apples and bananas, but suppose I take an arbitrary um, generating function for some a's, a0, a1, a12, all the way. So this is the generating function a of x, and I multiply it by the generating function b of x, and I ask, in this product, which is going to be another infinite series, how do I get a term that uh, is an x to the 12th term? Now, first of all, if I'm going to get an x to the 12th term, it's never going to come from a term in the A series that has degree higher than 12. So these terms don't matter. And neither is it going to come from a term that's higher than degree 12 among the Bs. So those terms don't matter. If I'm going to get a, a, a term that is a, a times x to the 12th, it's, a, uh, it's, it's of 12th degree in x, it's going to come by multiplying the first 12, 13 a's by the thir first 13 b's in the series. And how do I get it? Well, um, I can get a, a degree 12 term by taking a0 x to the 0 times b12 x to the 12, that is the first term in the in the A series and the 12th term in the B series. And that will give me, of course, uh, an x12 term because x to the 0 is 1. And that's one way to do it. Next way to do it is to use the term a1x1 with the term b11x11. That'll give me a1b1 times x to the 1, x to the 11. In other words, another x to the 12th term. And continuing in this way, um, I can uh, finish up by taking a11x to the 11 with b1x1 and finally a12x12 with b0x0. And those are the exactly the ways that I can get terms of degree 12. Uh, and of course, what we're saying is that that coefficient of x to the 12th is exactly that expression that we saw uh, on the previous slide where I multiplied together. Let's go back to look at that again. Um, this term, which is called, by the way, the convolution of the sequences of A's with the sequences of B's. Um, the sequence where the 12th element has this form is called the convolution of the, uh, is the 12th coordinate of the convolution sequence. The convolution sequence is the coefficients of the uh, product of the two generating functions.